Snyder. But the next 90 minutes between Rangers and Celtic will have a huge bearing on where the title ends up at the end of the season. The crunch match is about to begin. Rangers make two changes from the side which started last Sunday's Cup semi-final victory at Celtic Park. Gordon Petrich is injured, but the man who replaced him at Parkhead, Lorenzo Amoruso, would have been promoted to the first 11 in any case. The return of Gordon Jury in place of midfielder Rino Gattuso shows Rangers attacking intentions. Jury will play alongside the man of the moment, Ali McCoyst, who made the breakthrough against Celtic last weekend. His record equaling 27th Old Firm goal and his 7th in the last 6 games. Celtic make one switch after the 2-1 win at Rugby Park on Wednesday. They welcome back Alan Stubbs to the centre of defence, but Morton Beacourt is injured, so Phil O'Donnell keeps his place after a couple of impressive outings. Jackie McNamara had a recurrence of ankle trouble yesterday, but Tom Boyd and Rico Anoni have both recovered. Henrik Larsson's goal in that hugely important win at Kilmarnock was his first in more than six weeks. The Swedish striker has been highly influential, and his form here and in the last few games will have a big say in Celtic's title bid. The referee is Hugh Dallas. Rangers kick off. Eagerly anticipated, doesn't quite cover it. Rangers on the back of five straight wins, which has really turned their season around and given them real belief that they can rock at their way back into strong title contention and there's Darren Jackson holding his place in the Celtic side his battle and qualities in no doubt and he's battled his way back into Vim Janssen's thoughts Jackson waiting for it to come to him missed by Anoni Brian Loudrup stealing a couple of yards on him Jury and McCoyst in the middle and only got back to tuck the ball behind, conceding a corner kick and making up that fresh air shot he had, which released Loudrup. Chelsea bound Loudrup, keen to make a big impression before he goes. Goff has scored against Celtic, the last twice he's played him here at Ibrox. Flicked away by O'Donnell. Back in from Jonas Tern. up by Stuart McCall Brian Loudrup Alberts outside him it's a good ball in it was curling wickedly away from Jonathan Gould and turned behind by Phil O'Donnell real quality on the ball played in here from Alberts and the last old firm match as Rangers manager for Walter Smith for Henrik Larsson, good control under pressure from his fellow Swede, Yorkland. Darren Jackson! Well worth the effort, a couple of yards outside the area. It was left by O'Donnell to Jackson to have the shot at goal. This kick from Reaper, fortunate that it found Burley. Jackson to Donnelly. Rolls it for Larson. Good play by Henrik Larson. Good skill. And this will be the first yellow card of the match. Amoruso is booked last Sunday. He's booked again. Beaten for pace and for skill by Larson. Shrug of the shoulders, a shake of the head from Amoruso. You know, his, his yellow cards will mount up. Henrik Larson again, can he keep it in? Yes he can, well dealt with by Andy Coram, knocked into the near post. This was a useful opportunity for Celtic, and what Henrik Larson wanted to do was whip this in beyond Coram. Jim Janssen very eager, but he's 
spotted. It's Darren Jackson who's coming off. He's picked up a knock early on. Celtic have to make a switch, although it will be a straight switch because Harold Brattback will slot into exactly the position which was filled by Jackson. Away from Amoruso. Simon Donnelly's first touch let him down there. Well done by Brian Ledrup using his body to get away from Stubbs. He's away too from Lambert, got to the byline, and then couldn't quite find the extra bit of energy to knock the ball in. This was clever play to work the opening. All it was missing the final ball. Launched in by Lorenzo Amoruso, up was Richard Goff, away by Mark Reaper. Yunus What a goal by turn! 25 minutes of the match gone, Walter Smith joins in the celebrations. Rangers have the breakthrough, he's been in tremendous form. He's on a hot streak turn, that's his fourth goal in the last five games. And Jonathan Gold was a mere spectator here as the volley exploded into the top corner behind him. It's taken a goal of real quality to break the deadlock. 1-0 Rangers. Now Alberts, he's found a bit of room, he's on his own. Good effort from him, beat down by Jonathan Gould. George Alberts doesn't need too many invitations in that sort of position. It was straight at Gold, but it was hit with ferocious power. And it meant that all the Scotland B goalkeeper could do was beat that away and hope to gather the rebound. Stubbs away from Amoruso Goff was behind him lofted in by Paul Lambert he's already experienced the joy of scoring an old farm goal two goals in Celtic colours but unlikely to equalise that time and to equalise a very special goal from turn so sweetly struck Jonathan Gould got the meanest of touches and that's the reaction the goal sparked in the Rangers director's box. Mark Reaper's head up, finding its way through to Hendrik Larsson. Simon Donnelly getting himself away first from Judy, then Alberts. Now linking up with Larson. Brett back is up ahead of him. Phil Donald is out wide. Low and hard into the box. Shooting opportunity for Lambert. He'll be disappointed he didn't hit the target with that. He would have wanted to have forced Andy Gorham into a save here. It fell very invitingly for Lambert. And he hooked it well wide. Finding the coist. Three for Brian Loudrop. Racing away. What pace he showed there to get to that. Nipped that away from Alan Stubbs. Cross missing Reaper. Unfortunately for Rangers, missing McCoyst as well. Here's Turn. Spotting Alberts in central midfield. Good composure from Burley.
pushing forward, Alan Stubbs. Came off Amoruso. Here's Paul Lambert. So close to an equaliser, Lambert. He's had a few shooting opportunities of late. This is his best effort so far on his left foot. And not far away from that Rangers goal. And he got him flung himself across as that shot skimmed wide. And Brian Ledrick on halfway. His first job was to get away from Craig Burley. Joe McCall to Gordon Jury. Played that off Tom Boyd. Boyd right behind him, and Loudrup with Anoni for company. He's done some great man marking jobs, Anoni. This only his 12th start for Celtic this season. In from turn, George Alberts with the header. It was a good one, well directed away from Jonathan Gould. What it lacked was a bit of power, which may well have meant a second Rangers goal. Well handled by Gould. Again, Amarusa getting the better of Larson. Flipped on by Jury for Albert. It's a good return pass for Jury. He's away from Anoni. And a bad foul by the Italian. And this will be a certain booking. Jury too quick for Anoni. And he was caught late. A booking for Anoni. Walter, as Walter Smith has left his seat in the stand, now imparting some instructions from the dugout area. All smiles with Archie Knox, relying the tension of this fixture. Five in the Celtic wall. George Alberto for the free kick. Lorenzo Amoruso alongside him. Hit that firmly, but Phil O'Donnell is alive to the situation. Alberts, the return pass from Jury. Here's Alberts doing his best to win it back. Free kick going against him for the tackle on Burley. Cleared by Goff. Controlled in the chest of Lambert. That for Amoruso. Hey, hey. Back back. Finding Phil O'Donnell in an offside position. The Rangers defence had moved out. And that meant when the pass was played, O'Donnell marginally off. Play on, says Hugh Dallas. For Donnelly. Five minutes of the first half left. Mike Larson is good to get on with the throw. And Hugh Dallas eager to have words with Gordon Jury. Sprinting in the field, escaping George Alberts. That was in for O'Donnell, cut out by Goff. The flag was up. And 
O'Donnell was offside, but that was a good intervention. Uh, Richard Coffey read this very well. Good anticipation. And I'm not so sure Phil O'Donnell was offside. Now Burley. Hoping Paul Lambert was alongside him. He was a few yards back. Now Judy on the counter. Inside the last minute of the first 45. Tom Boyd, Stackle and Brian Lydrick. free kick Jim Janssen looks nervously on two in the wall in front of Albert and Amoruso in the area Goff there too from Albert Richard Goff got got a free header and he's annoyed with himself but he didn't make more of that well found by Albert Powerfully in, but directly at Gould. That was a chance to make it two. And make Rangers half time lead a whole lot healthier. Boyd for Anoni. Nearly a minute of stoppage time played at the end of the first half. And that effort well away from the Rangers goal. Still waiting for his for a Celtic goal and after this he'll have to wait a bit longer that's half time and Rangers have what could be a precious half time lead Jonas turn broke the deadlock with a stunning bully which ripped into the net past Jonathan Gould from 25 yards the keeper got a touch with his fingertips but Jonas Tern celebrated as did the Rangers fans if the scoreline stays this way they will go joint top of the Premier Division tonight it's 1-0 at half time Celtic get the match restarted they lost last Sunday in part one of this old firm double header that cost them a place in the Tenet Scottish Cup final but they would view defeat here in part two and it was even more serious a great wish of winning the first title in ten years Amaruso. Amaruso so impressive, so dominant in the Rangers defence in the first half. Good ball from Anoni. Phil O'Donnell stretching out. As the here come Bjorklund. Last touch off Bjorklund. And the first corner kick of the second half. Indeed, Celtic's first corner kick of the match. Taken by Simon Donnelly, giving him plenty of air. Gordon Judy jumping at the edge of the box. Alan stops, good control. And offside. The flag was up against Phil O'Donnell early on here. And the pass was slipped through by Stubbs, three of them offside. Given away by Jonas Stern to Craig Burley. Reverse pass cut out by Tern. And Larson. Not the instant control we're used to from him. Hassled out by Alec Cleland. Another corner kick to Celtic. As Van Janssen screams out instructions. Trying desperately to make himself heard. There really is incredible noise inside Ibrox. Reaper's 
sorting out their tactics. They jump for Larson. Alan stops! Tipped away by Andy Gorham. Gorham continually a problem for Celtic in all firm matches. Such are his goalkeeping abilities. Knocked across by a Reaper for Stubbs. These two are some combination. But it'll have to be better than that to beat Gorham. So O'Donnell. Chased by Jury. Nodded the ball away and then seemed to be taken out by Lambert. Maybe not too much in the way of Malice from Lambert, or indeed in a second look, maybe there was. The elbow up. Loudrup on the move. And Nico Anoni trying to stay with him. Loudrup weaving his way along the byline. Hugh Dallas was very close to the action there, able to decide. It looked as if that was a foul by Anoni and Loudrup. Not given, presumably, because Hugh Dallas reckoned. But Enrico Anoni got the ball here after Lydrup had appeared to be away from him. Oh, that looked a clear foul. A flip from Lydrup for Alberts. Alan McCoyst. Just trying to counter attack. The reverse pass from Alberts is a good one for McCoyst. The early ball in. Chased by Gould, doesn't get there. And away with the ball comes Phil O'Donnell. Rangers fans, management on the touchline looking for a free kick. They thought that was a foul on Jonas Ter. In the meantime, it's Henrik Larsson. And that's a bad tackle by Joachim Bjorklund, and it's another booking. And again, it's the pace and ability of Larsson which gets him away from players in this sort of situation. And it was a rush challenge by Bjorklund. Another yellow card. Back from Larson to O'Donnell. Needs a good ball in. Here by Cleland. Donnelly got that away to Paul Lambert. Blocked by McCall. Simon Donnelly was looking for a free kick. Play rages on. Boyd to Lambert. Good run by Paul Lambert. Paul Lambert all the way! And sliced the shot wide at the end of it. This was superb skill from Lambert, weaving his way into the box, away from four Rangers players but not the finish he was looking for this was the moment Andy Gorham came out and out of the angle Paul Lambert will be very disappointed about this would have been a special goal that's for sure Donnelly to Lambert so Donnelly again so in hot pursuit, one back by Albert, it's a short pass from Jury, driving through the midfield Albert, shaking off the challenge from Greg Burley, it's Albert! Just as he did last Sunday, Albert hammers in the second. <laughs> 22 minutes of the second half gone. Rangers very much back in business in the title race and uh, this could be the goal that kills off Celtic in part two of the old firm double header and uh, this could be the goal it's Rangers back on top of the Premier table superb composure superb skill from Albert celebration time for Walter Smith to O'Donnell is short Alan Stubbs beaten by Ali McCoyst and Brian Loudrup was in an offside position 
Coist released the early ball there. Frustration on the face of Brian Loudrup, who was clearly off. Good play from Batiso, got the return pass from Turn. Albertson Loudrup in exactly the same place. Chipped in for Ali McCoist. A well timed run. And he was well found as well by the left footed Alberts. McCoist making his run across the box away from Reaper. But what he couldn't do here is keep the header down. Not surprisingly, glum faces among the Celtic support. I reckon that their team are plummeting towards what could be a very damaging defeat. George Alberts almost in again. Finding Ali McCoist. Off target for once. He goes. This was a decent chance to make it three. He skipped his marker. He was found by the Albert pass. But he sliced the effort wide. That long run from Phil O'Donnell. Tracked all the way by Brian Lerdrup. Giving the ball to Richard Goff. Skipper was least expecting it there. In a very tight situation. It's calmly dealt with. And that's a good pass from Loudrup, which releases Alberts. It's two against one. Ali McCoy's alongside him. Here's McCoy. He's missed another chance and he can scarcely believe it. If the last one was a good opportunity, that one was a whole lot better. Coist will not want to see this back, set up by Alberts and he pulled it wide of Jonathan Gould and wide of goal. Maruso's header flicked on by McCall and a neat flick as well from Alberts and then from Gattuso. Now McCoist trying to make up for the miss, bouncing off Mark Reaper, free kick, destruction. Here's another opportunity for Rangers. Because the man over the ball is Albert. Hammered in. Jonathan Gould watched it very carefully. It swerved away. And in the end it was well wide of goal. Stamps being forced back by Tern. Reaper for Bratback. Now Henrik Larsson, that's for Harold Bratback, chance here for Bratback, blocked by Amoruso. Good opportunity here for Harold Bratback, it was a well-timed run, slipped away from Cleland, but sliding in was Amoruso. One of times these now for Vim Janssen, he's made such an impression this season with Celtic. Loudrup. Turn left by McCoyst for Albert Gattuso and McCoyst up ahead of him rolled into the stride of Gattuso and Rino Gattuso's effort knocked off the line by his fellow Italian Rico Anoni this was a great effort in making it three very composed Gattuso tried to slide this into the net and through the legs of gold Alberts with the corner, Reaper with the header, that was Tern, knocked across by Gattuso, and that's full time, a shake of the hands between Walter Smith and Vim Janssen, and the Rangers fans celebrate the fact that their team are back on top of the Premier Division. Richard Goff and Andy Gorham in their last Old Firm matches go out in real style and will this be the result which gives Rangers a springboard 
towards 10 titles on the trot. George Albert scored the second goal. That's the goal that means that they topple Celtic from the top of the table on goal difference. The two teams are level now on points and it promises to be an intriguing title run-in. But Rangers have certainly bounced back. Two Old Farm wins on consecutive Sundays. One took them to the Scottish Cup final and one has put them firmly back in title contention. This was the first goal. Jonas Ter burying that volley behind Jonathan Gould. And the second was from Alberts, reminiscent of the run which brought him his goal in the cup semi-final and again Jonathan Gould was left to pick the ball out Walter Smith in his last old firm match was able to celebrate the final score at Ibrox Rangers 2 Celtic 0 Walter your old firm career ending on a high yes we're very pleased about that uh, but uh, Better pleased that Rangers are a better place now in a championship and the fact that uh, my last Old Firm game was a victory. I'm pleased that we've got ourselves back into pole position in the championship. That's the main thing. We are disappointed because we lost uh, the game today and uh, uh, especially the first half I think we played well and uh, they scored a goal and I think that that's always a problem because uh, when they scored a goal we have to chase it after that. and. Uh, you know, uh, the goals are always the decision in the game and uh, we, we chase uh, the 1-0 at that time and uh, yeah, we give at the time a uh, little bit uh, too much space away, uh, especially in the second half and they scored the second and you know, if you see the whole game it wasn't really necessary but because if you see the teams I think if there's a draw nobody could tell anything about that. Does that give you a psychological edge having beaten Celtic twice in two weeks? I think... They have to feel the pressure now, yeah, they have to win every game that's remaining because uh, we're going to do our best to, to win our game. So, uh, like I said before, I think it's going to be, until then, until the last round, it's going to be very tough. It all makes for an exciting run in to the title because this is a result today which will please Hearts, I'm sure, as well. Well, uh, certainly Hearts are still involved now, they still have Rangers to play, so uh, they're involved and uh, we'll all need to keep on our toes. So Rangers go back to the top of the Premier Division. And Gordon, what impressed me about Rangers today was their strength and directness. What for you was the crucial difference between the sides? Well, they are a strong side. I think I'm impressed with Rangers' ability to grind out results when they need them. Even today, for spells, Celtic were on top again, like the cup match. But Rangers just wait their time and they take their chances as well. Celtic are failing to take their opportunities when they're getting them. But Rangers are and they end up they could have won comfortably, even more comfortably again. They could have won by four or five when you consider the chances they also missed. Rangers ahead on goal difference only. I guess Celtic have to remember that they're still up there at the top of the league. But how damaging a psychological blow has this been for them today? Well, you can't rule out psychology at this stage, Hazel, because it's a league championship. There's a run-in. It's very, very vital that uh, you know both sides continue to get results. But uh, Celtic have, have lost a, a good lead. And that's the main factor from their point of view. They really could have put Rangers be out of sight at this stage and they haven't done it. And with four games to go, Rangers are, are on top now, albeit by one goal, which is very, very uh, meagre. But it means that Celtic have continued to have the pressure piled on them. It was Jonas Tern who got the breakthrough and it was Rangers' 100th goal of the season in all competitions. Worthy of that special status? Yeah, it was. It was a fantastic strike. I mean, the ball was delivered from the free kick, headed out. I think it was Stubbs that won the header. Turned to one touch and then volleyed it, and it was a fantastic hit. I mean, you won't see a ball struck much harder than that. And then George Albert. It's almost a carbon copy of last week. I think that's the surprising thing. Were you surprised at how badly Celtic defended it? Yeah, they didn't defend it too well, because when you consider that George Alberts is absolutely brilliant on his left side, he wants to get onto his left foot, and he's most dangerous when he is on that left side. And he, he manoeuvred himself into position, got it onto that left foot, and from a bit further out this time, 
20 yards, he delivered a stunning shot into the corner of the net and at that stage it was beyond Celtic but that was what's happening. Rangers began to get through them once again in that midfield area with Celtic had been strong throughout the game. Indeed just before that, moments before it, Paul Lambert's solo run perhaps deserved a goal at the end of it. Was that for you a turning point in the match? Yeah, I think it was. I think if they got back on terms though, there they might have had a chance but uh, it was a superb work by Paul Lambert. I mean, he doesn't normally find himself in such forward positions but he had about four efforts today. Uh, none of them on target has to be said but he was uh, the probably the most dangerous player from Celtic's point of view but he was so unlucky the ball just lost a little bit of control at the end sliced his shot really when uh, if he delivered it uh, with inside of his foot he would have scored how crucial were Andy Gorham's interventions this afternoon well uh, Gorham continues to be important for Rangers uh, especially against Celtic I mean his record against them is fantastic he's broken the hearts on many occasions and I think today once again everything he had to do was tidy nothing really spectacular but one or two saves he made them look easy when actually they're a lot more difficult than that. Well, four games to go, Gordon. Let's have a look at that run-in. And all of a sudden, the game in two weeks' time, Hearts against Rangers, assumes massive importance. Well, it's a crucial game for, for both sides, but uh, we don't know how much it's going to mean to Hearts at this stage. Rangers have got the harder run-in. I mean, you just look at it and you think it's Aberdeen away, Hearts away, they've got Kilmarnock at home and then Dundee United away. They couldn't have three harder away games than that, really. But uh, at this stage of the season, when they've got themselves back in the hunt, who would bet against them winning those four games? And I think that uh, probably the team that does win the four games will probably take the championship. Would you prefer to have Celtics run in with three home games? Well, home games are, are also a pressure, Hazel. I mean, it looks on paper better, but Celtic have uh, failed to win their last three home games. They're going to have to improve in that record if they're going to win the league. I think at this stage it's still wide open, but you've got to say that uh, you know it should be in Celtic's favour. But we've said that all along and, and Rangers are still right there. Thanks, Gordon. And we'll be back with a look at the home stretch in this fascinating Premier Division run-in on Friday Sports Scene this week, BBC One Scotland, 10.20. But in the meantime, we'll leave you with the two goals that took Rangers back to the top of the Premier Division. From us all here at Ibrox, good night. In a change to the scheduled programme, Frontline Scotland on Tuesday meets the controversial figure of Reg Brearley, who has just taken over at St Mirren. That's Love Street Blues, Frontline Scotland, 9.30 Tuesday on BBC One Scotland. A splash of colour for the children of Edinburgh. Edinburgh is using this place. You don't want things that just look nice, like me. <laughs> you want something that smells nice, like you. An unusual encounter in sunny Guernsey. This is rude, boy. <laughs> it grows to about... Six foot spike. Man of many talents. The Beach Grove <laughs> Garden, Thursday, 8 30, BBC One, Scotland. Recalling a great night of comedy now on BBC One Scotland, Dawn French relishes the best bits of last year's comic relief.